Hi everyone, it's my privilege to welcome you to the Synoptic Gospels class here at Lee University. What an exciting opportunity we have this term to dive into the earliest traditions that we have about Jesus in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. My name is Josh Rice, and I don't know that I've had any of you in class before if I looked at the list right, and so I'm very excited to be getting to know you during the next eight weeks. Just a little bit about me, I'm a full-time pastor at Mount Perrin Church of God in Marietta, Georgia, and I drive to Cleveland, Tennessee twice a week to teach in the classroom at Lee and also at the seminary just across the street. For the last year, I've been involved as well in teaching online courses, both at Lee and the seminary, and I love this format because it really allows you on a weekly basis to dive into the course materials on your own and to engage with me so that we can learn from one another. And I think this is really going to be a great experience. Allow me to take just a few minutes and let's walk through the contours of the class and of Unit 1. In fact, at the beginning of each course unit, all eight of them, you'll get a video just like this from me uh, hitting on any salient details, anything we need to cover, recover, discover as we move through the course materials. Pull, pull up the syllabus, uh, which is in Moodle under course materials, and let's go over the most important features of the course. We want to set you up for success right off the bat so that you're feeling confident about what you have to do to perform at your very best. First you'll notice there's one single and simple textbook for the course by Mark Allen Powell simply called The Gospels. If you don't have it yet you can get it through the Lee University bookstore or you can get it on Amazon.com for very very cheap because it's in paperback. This is an excellent overview of why the Gospels are called synoptic why there is so much similar material, uh, similar structure and chronology in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In addition to this textbook, I'll be supplementing uh, our learning throughout the course with various resources in the differing units. Those resources will be available through Moodle. Well, if you scroll down to the course contents and the evaluation page of the syllabus, let's go over what's expected in the course. What will the guts of the coursework look like week to week? First, you'll notice that 30% of your grade is for weekly discussion posts. And I need to walk through exactly what my expectations are here. My expectations may differ from some of your other professors. They're very specific. I want you to be clear from the outset. First off, you're going to notice this week that I use a question and answer format for my discussion posts, which you may not have seen before. What this means is that rather than forming your own discussion thread, you will respond to my little button that says post here. This simply won't allow you to look at any other student's post before posting your initial post. My goal, as you can imagine, is to make sure that you're really digging in originally to the PAL text so that your grade will be as good as possible. After you post your initial text, you'll be able to see other students' posts and to post accordingly. What am I looking for in the discussion posts? Let me tell you what I'm not looking for. I'm not looking for your own devotional thoughts on the biblical text. I'm looking for evidence that you've read Powell and or other course materials posted on Moodle and that you are engaging with them. Here's the good news. I read and respond to every discussion post and I give you time to make corrections or additions if I call for them. The only way that you won't get the full points for discussion posts is if you don't post on time, initial posts are due Friday by midnight, or you don't respond to a follow-up question that I ask in the post. So I try to make it as user-friendly as possible for you, and I'm very, very engaged in the weekly discussion posts. This is where uh, the, the inner machine of our learning happens, in just the week-to-week -week diving into the course materials and engaging with one another on the discussion board. So I think you'll find that very fruitful. If you scroll down to the next segment of the contents of the course, you'll notice that 30% of your grade is based on two papers, two scriptural text analyses. I'm not going to cover those right now simply because they're not due, um, I don't believe, until Unit 3. But when we get to that unit, we'll cover every point of that paper in detail so that, again, you can make the best grade possible. And finally, there are two exams on the course, a midterm and a final. The final is not cumulative. Each test respectively or respectively covers its half of the course and we'll have plenty of time to get you prepared and discuss what you need to do to be ready for those exams uh, when the time comes. Let me discuss late work for just a moment. This is a perennial problem, not just at Lee, but in online education. 
sometimes it's easy to imagine that an online class is kind of like an independent study. As long as you do the work, I'm kind of your guide and your coach. I grade your work. You get it in whenever you can, and you get a grade at the end. That's not the case at all. Instead, our weekly discussion posts, our weekly work, equal your classroom attendance. Just last week at the seminar, I had a student who I had not heard from in three weeks on an online class show up for the midterm, which is also online, and want to make all the week up, want to make all the work up. Well, to me, that's the equivalent of him not showing up in a classroom for three, three weeks and not making any contact with me. So that being said, I don't allow late work any more than I allow you to not show up for class in the classroom and still participate in the class and earn a good grade. Now, that being said, I realize things happen. I realize you might get ill. I realize you might have a family issue that you have to deal with. And so this is my offer to you. I will offer you one get out of jail free card on one assignment for the week during the class. I don't need to know why you're using it. Please don't tell me why you're using it. I have almost 100 online students and I cannot mediate between everybody's busy schedules. I'm busy as well as you can imagine. So simply send me an email whenever you want to use it with the heading in the subject line, get out of jail free card. That's all I need to know. I'll check you off the list. You use your one and you'll be able to turn in the assignment late with no penalty whatsoever, excepting the final unit, only because I only have a week to get grades in. I don't have a lot of leeway when the course is closed. I would encourage you, of course, to wait on a crisis to use that get out of jail free card. I've had students in the last term who've been in traffic accidents, students in the past who've been hospitalized or endured the death of a loved one. They needed extra time. That's understandable. But don't burn your get-out-of-jail-free card on just being lazy and then wind up having to deal with a serious issue because you do not get a second card. So that's how we'll deal with that, and I hope you find that reasonable. I want to keep the course moving. I want to make sure you don't fall behind, and I want to be as engaged as I can in your work and in your development. My email is jrice at leeuniversity.edu. I will respond to your email requests within 24 hours. Nine times out of 10, I'll respond within four or five hours. And if we need to set up a phone conversation or a Skype conversation, we can certainly do that. Let me give you my cell phone number just so you have it. It's 404-665-7007. If you don't catch me, honestly, you probably won't the first time, leave me a voicemail and I'll be happy to get back to you. Once again, I'm really excited to be serving as your professor this term. I think it's going to be a great experience together. God bless.